Sean Levy is a director you honestly probably don't know, but he's definitely made movies that you've seen. But the reason you probably don't know about him and no one talks about him is because his films really aren't groundbreaking. Don't get me wrong, his films aren't terrible, they're not disasters, but also he really hasn't made a film that's truly incredible for the last 20 years. And I wanted to figure this out, so after I watched Deadpool and Wolverine, I decided I wanted to go back and watch this dude's entire filmography. So I watched every Sean Levy film, and today I'm going to review every single one and figure out why Sean Levy keeps putting out the most okay movies. But to figure this out, we must head through the filmography, and I'll be your guide as we go on this horrible journey through purgatory. <laughs> And this journey has to start somewhere, so let's start at the start of his filmography. With... Oh wait, not that far back. Sorry, Jet Jackson, you don't make the cut. So Sean Levy's first film is a kid's movie called Big Fat Liar. It's about the Malcolm in the Middle kid as he gets his story stolen by an evil Paul Giamatti who's gonna make a movie with this script. And the movie is actually pretty cute, because Paul Giamatti is giving the entire movie his all for no reason. He's drenched in blue dye that looks like it's seeping into his skin, and he single-handedly elevates a script that's pretty generic from writer Dan Schneider. Oh my gosh. Sean, how is that your first writer off the bat? Well, ignoring that, the first thing you notice while watching this film is just how much fun Paul Giamatti had on this film. It's clear he was given a lot of room to work with, and you realize that is because the trust Sean Levy had with him. In an interview, Sean talked about how he and Paul went to film school together, and they really trusted each other, and I think that's what makes this movie as fun as it is, even with the classic type of Disney Channel setup. So the two big takeaways right off the bat from Big Fat Liar is Sean Levy doesn't really have a unique filmmaking style. He has lots of normal shot reverse shot, nothing new crazy, he gets a lot of good coverage, but it's not really stylistic, and everything he does does feel like a glorified Disney Channel movie. Like, you can try to move on with your filmmaking career, but those Jet Jackson roots are always going to stick with you. And the second thing is that his actors actually trust him, and that is what gives great performances. And I think that leads to Big Fat Liar being a really sweet and fun kids movie. Uh, I'll give this movie a 6 out of 10. I'm going to try to give all of these a score, but if I forget, the letterbox is down below. Just go check out, because I have ratings for all of these movies. So if I forget, just go down there and check it out. But let's move on. Just as you can't take Jet Jackson out of the 90s, you can't really take Ashton Kutcher out of the 2000s. So the next weird movie up is Just Married. It's an Ashton Kutcher rom-com. It's not that special and it's not really that interesting. Not all I'll talk about with this movie. But Ashton Kutcher is a great segue into a movie much better with him, Cheaper by the Dozen. This is a cute movie that once again is a decent movie with a fantastic performance from the lead actor, which in this movie is Steve Martin. This still has huge Disney Channel energy, probably because there are a ton of Disney Channel stars in this, which is pretty fun for my 2000s nostalgia ridden brain. Sean Levy here shows that he is really good with big A-list actors, and surprisingly he's really good at working with kids. Just watch the outro, I don't, is that incest? Oh my gosh. Anyways, back on track. Sean Levy here proves that he's really good at working with kid actors, and we'll see that in his future because a lot of his films, surprisingly, have kids as the main actors. No, Dan, get out of here! <laughs> Cheaper by the Dozen is cute. It's not great, but it's like 5 out of 10. I like it. He followed this up, though, with Pink Panther, the remake. And while my mom would probably shoot me in the head if she heard that the first Pink Panther film I watched was the remake without Peter Sellers, this film still is pretty interesting because it shows that Sean Levy must be extremely likable and easy to work with since Steve Martin, a legendary comic actor, was willing to work with Levy again. Which is a recurring thing that's interesting with Sean Levy, as actors continue to work with this man. Actors consistently come back to work with him, and that's always a sign of a great director, as we see another piece of the Levy puzzle fall into place. This movie's whatever, by the way. Let's get to the film of my favorite character, Rexy. Yeah, I love Night at the Museum, because it had a T-Rex, and what are you gonna do? Sue me? It's my entire channel. It's my favorite thing ever. If you saw this movie when you were three, you would've loved it too. And now I'm gonna review the whole trilogy here, because all these films, I think, quality-wise, are pretty similar. So what is there to take away from this trilogy? And honestly, not a lot. They're just really fun crowd pleaser. First off, it's insane that Dick Van Dyke is still alive when this video comes out. Second, probably it's not the most sensitive movie at the time, but it is super fun. And when I was a kid, I loved the first film and completely forgot the sequels existed. And I think the reason I loved this film when I was a kid was because it had a simple structure with funny actors giving Looney Tune performances and there was a T-Rex. And honestly, that's all I wanted this movie to be. And I think Sean Levy with this film shows to a huge company like Disney that he's extremely reliable. He delivered all of these films on time and on budget, he gets these huge ensemble cast to return multiple times for this trilogy, and this film shows us a huge part of Levy's workflow and that he loves structure. All of his films structure-wise aren't crazy, they hit you with the same beats, 
It's funny, it's lighthearted, and you're out within two hours. He has only made two films in his career that I think have gone over two hours, and one of them will not stop reminding you that it's over two hours by its adorable end sync narrator. But I think that's the biggest thing to take away from Night of the Museum. These movies aren't crazy, I think they're pretty cute for revisiting them. I think the first one's a six, and the other two are probably like fives. It doesn't really matter, it's Night of the Museum. They're just cute. I'm not going to be too critical on these. Next up, Date Night. The only thing to take away from this movie is that John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein probably saw this and realized they could do it way better with Game Night. So unfortunately, not much to learn from Levy in this one other than he gets an insane cast here, which is very 2010s, and he gets two very likable performances out of Steve Carell and Tina Fey, but it's kind of whatever. 3 out of 10. Real Steel though. I remember in high school, one of my best friends loved this movie. It's a dorky rock'em sock'em movie with Hugh Jackman acting his heart out boxing air, and I can see how that really appeals to some people. This film is a testament to how well actors work with Sean Levy, and how he must be an expert negotiator to get them to sign on to these wacky projects, or he just walks around with a duffel bag full of cash. This movie though is Sean Levy though, I kinda think it is peak of generic. This is the plot of Rocky beat for beat but with robots. Like, the robot just wants to go the distance, and Hugh's girlfriend is in the crowd, but he's the people's champion. But that said, though, it's not horrible. Levy somehow makes what should be a film with a premise that could go south so quickly, and turns it into a crowd pleaser that just really kind of isn't my thing, so I can't even hate it. It's not terrible, 4 out of 10, but why is he still making these same type of generic movies? And I think that's an important fact to look at. It is so interesting how Sean Levy, it feels like, is bailed out a lot by actors giving very strong performances in very generic films. Like look at The Internship, it's a pretty generic movie about Google, but Owen Wilson's really good. Once again, the most generic script, and who wants to make a movie about Google? It's a humongous corporation that that, I was trying to say, pays my bills. Thank you, Google. But after all of that, after all of these films had solely faded into obscurity in a Walmart $5 DVD bins, there's one film that stands out. And it's a movie that's so good that Sean Levy wouldn't direct another movie for seven years, which is insane. And it shows without a single doubt that Sean Levy is an extremely talented director, and he can make incredible films. This is where I leave you as an indie dramedy about a family reuniting after the death of their dad. It's got a stud cast as usual, like every Levy film, but it never stood down into the dumb comedy and generic formula that he usually gravitates towards. It has interesting characters with strong relationships and very complicated lives, and Levy thrives with this material. The film is shot extremely well, everyone is giving great performances, and Levy proves he can make incredible films with deep emotional cores. But also, I think deep down, these aren't the movies that he really wants to make. 7 out of 10. And here's where I really want to compliment Sean Levy because he is extremely successful. Sean Levy is a great time manager. Look how many projects he has not only in the works as a director, but also as a producer. He founded the production company 21 Laps, and this guy clearly knows what scripts are achievable in the allotted time he has for the project before he moves on to the next one. It's why he's one of the greatest journeyman directors, and also why he really hasn't made a film that I think is incredible. He knows what type of script of the certain format he can knock out before the next project. And he's extremely good as well at managing all of his projects that he's directing or producing. Like, we forget the dude produced Arrival. So remember kids, you can go from working with Dan Schneider to Denis Villeneuve and then Taylor Swift. Sean might have the strangest IMDb of all time. Sean Levy would go on to do a lot of Stranger Things in between his time between 2014 and 2021, but look after Stranger Things. He made Free Guy in 2021, The Adam Project for Netflix in 2022, directed two episodes of Stranger Things Season 4 in 2023, which is basically a feature film, and then Deadpool and Wolverine in 2024. And all of these quality-wise, except for Stranger Things, are about all on the same par. And there's not that much to learn about Sean Levy from these new films, other than he's gotten really good at directing action, he really likes to work with people that he trusts, and he knows he can deliver with as well. These films aren't horrible, but they were all made fairly quickly and had extremely quick turnaround times, and all of them were successful for their company. Once again, Levy delivered, and he's been able to do that through knowing which types of scripts he can turn into films quickly, and how he knows who he works best with. And for him right now, that's Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy have made three films with each other in the last three years because I think they like working with each other, and they also know what to expect. Levy, throughout his career, has given actors a lot of free reign, and for Reynolds, that is probably his favorite thing. His improvisational humor thrives in that environment with lots of takes and not a dictator director. And deep down as a producer, he gets to make the films that he wants to make. He wouldn't be making these films if he didn't like them, and it's not like his indie roots got destroyed by the big production style of large film 
development companies know. He's been making these type of movies for years. If you watch Deadpool and Wolverine and then go back to Big Fat Liar, his style is also very similar. And this is the final point. How is Sean Levy able to make so many films with great actors who consistently return and do more films with them? How does he do it? And I think it's the most hidden secret in Hollywood. I told you we'd get back around to it. I think he's just a really nice guy who's easy to work with. I know, it's not the answer you want to hear. There's no secret motivation, I don't think he has dirt on anyone, I think he's just a very competent director and he knows how to work with actors extremely well because that's what he studied when he was in college and originally wanted to be. I can't really hate Sean Levy because he must just be a really competent director and he's just making movies with his friends and then he gets paid and they get paid and they all have fun and then he goes and makes another movie with his friends. He's just good at his job and I can't hate him for that. He seems like a really nice guy and I hope him the best and I give his last three films all 10 out of 10 because I think my check just cleared. All right, perfect. Thank you, Sean. You were always my favorite director. I mean, he's so nice. I'm telling you, you guys need to hang out with more Canadians.